Hi campers, welcome to week three of the Met Opera Global Summer Camp. We have got opera lovers joining us from all seven continents for this global summer camp. I'm Susan Blackwell, I'm one of your camp counselors. I'm so happy to be here with you. This week's opera is Dvorak's Rusolka, and you can watch that opera this Wednesday through Friday at the link provided in the Google Classroom beginning on Wednesday. And here's a little taste of what's happening this week. Today, it's Get to Know the Opera with three fantastic camp counselors, Kara Johnson, Elizabeth Tummins, and Stephanie Holmes. Tomorrow, that's Tuesday, we're going to be doing a fun, hands-on activity with the amazing Emerald Trinket Walker. On Wednesday, the Mets Executive Stage Director, Paula Swazi will be hosting an artist chat with bass baritone Eric Owens, who plays the Water Sprite, a.k.a. Rusalka's father, in the production of Rusalka that you are going to be watching. On Thursday, we've got opera story time with star tenor Frederick Ballantyne, and I'll be in the career corner with the spectacular genius director, Mary Zimmerman. Also on Wednesday and Thursday, check-ins on Zoom with your camp counselors, and on Friday, it's Camper Showcase, hosted by your friends Dan Marshall and camp counselor Tim, where we get to see all the great things you've been creating all week. On Google Classroom, you can also find Creative Challenge with Ms. Bryant, Musical Moments, and Warm Ups with Ms. Berglund. And remember, almost all camp activities are live. Know that we want to hear from you, we want to know what questions you have, and we all want to learn from each other. And now, let's give a warm Met Summer Camp welcome to Camp Counselors Kara, Elizabeth, and Stephanie. Hello, Camp Counselors. Um, Camp Counselor Kara here with Camp Counselor Elizabeth. We are hosting today for the younger cohort, um, and you will see Camp Counselor Stephanie a little bit later today with the older cohort. We have so much to share with you today, and I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Camp Counselor Dan has our presentation ready to go, and I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I know, speaking for Elizabeth and I, Rusulka is one of our most favorite operas. It is beautiful, the costumes are beautiful, the set is beautiful, and of course, the singing is beautiful. And so we're so excited to share all of these activities with you today. First, we're gonna tell you a little bit about ourselves. Dan, I think we're ready for the next slide. So luckily for our camp counselor, Elizabeth and I, we have known each other for over 20 years. Um, <laughs> I, I'm the one in the, um, I'm not a sea nymph um, like Rosalka or as beautiful as Rosalka, but there's a picture of me in my sea princess costume at school. Um, I've been teaching fourth grade for the last year, but um, have taught fifth grade for the last, gosh, I think 17 or 18 years. I've kind of lost track. Interesting. Um, and I teach at a school in Columbia, Missouri called Locust Street Expressive Arts School. We are an arts integrated elementary school within our public school system. So we get to teach all the regular stuff, but then we are so lucky to get to teach with our arts specialists like our music specialist, Elizabeth, and our arts specialists. Um, so we're a very unique school and that's what has brought opera to my life. Elizabeth, what about you? Um, I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> I have been teaching for a very long time, kindergarten all the way through high school, music and choir and band. I love to sing and play and dance. And um, I've taught all over the state of Missouri um, in the United States. Um, and right now I'm in Columbia, which is also where I grew up. So it's kind of nice to come back home, which is our next slide. So we are right in the center of the United States. You see our little star. Also, you see the cover of a book that I am featuring in one of our lessons about setting in Rusalka. And it's a beautiful picture book by Carson Ellis. She is an amazing um, author. Look up her blog. Her art is beautiful. And it talks about all kinds of different homes. And we'll talk more about that later. So we're ready for the next slide. 
So the past several weeks of opera camp, you guys have been introduced to, to ooh, joke o'clock. I know camp counselor, um, Dr. Emily Sines did a lot of jokes last week with our campers. <laughs> so if you've been to camp before, you know what joke o'clock is. If you're new this week, joke o'clock is just a fun way to share jokes with us about music, about opera. So there's a couple of ways that you could submit jokes. I know some of you have already submitted some. You can scan the QR code that's on your screen right now if you have another device handy, and that will take you to a chat form where you can enter your name and your joke. So excited to see all of these. But also the JOT form is located in our Google Classroom. So whichever Google Classroom you are a part of, depending on your last name, all the information's the same. Just click on the link and it'll take you to the same JOT form. Um, and you get to share your joke with us. So we're so excited. And Camp Counselor Dan will let us know when it is joke o'clock. I love jokes, so I'm so excited <laughs> for this. <laughs> um, Miss Elizabeth, you are next. Okay, Mr. Dan, we are ready for our mindfulness music. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna get ready to learn. So close your eyes and bring yourself to a calm, quiet place in your mind. Just stay here and relax for a few moments. Breathe deeply and comfortably and notice how wonderful it feels to tune into your own body. Just listen as our air moves in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. It is a quiet and beautiful sound. Now imagine transporting yourself magically to a warm, sunny beach. You can choose your favorite beach, or if you've never been to a beach, just imagine what it would be like. Picture yourself there now at the edge of a lake. You feel the lapping of the warm waves against your toes. Let your toes sink deeply into the wet sand. The sun shines brightly and gently warms your skin. It's as if the sun is reaching down and pouring its love on you. As you slowly walk along, you feel the rhythm of the calm waves flow over the sand. Notice how your breathing becomes calm and even. Notice your tummy rising and falling with your breathing. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Imagine you are a joyful jellyfish floating in the water. Now, let any worries you have glide off your jelly body and feel them slip away into the water. Float freely through the lake. Nothing is in your way or holding you back. You have a joyful jellyfish heart, ready for our learning adventure. Wiggle your toes and fingers and take one more breath and join us with your joyful heart. Oh, thank you, Miss Elizabeth. That was just what I needed today. So <laughs> and Miss Kara, I'm going to put in a mindfulness activity each day in the oh. Google Drive. I started off with one from one of my favorite music teachers. His name is John Fire Robin, and it is actually for mirroring. And he worked oh. with a professional dance teacher to do all kinds of mirroring activities. And it's along with... Um, the music Aquarium from Carnival of the Animals. So Just you can find that today. For yep. Awesome. So fantastic. So we're going to switch screen sharing right now. Um, Again, if you are new to Opera Camp, we have been using the website Minty to kind of collect information from all of our campers. It's a great way to learn from each other. It's a great way to share ideas. So if you on your computer or on another device want to go to menti.com, it's M-E-N-T-I.com and follow the prompts, it will prompt you to enter the code 1385. 28. And I want you to think about this question. Elizabeth mentioned magic in her mindfulness moment. So I want you to start thinking about fairy tales, 
Fairy tales are all over the world. Fairy tales come in all different languages. And be thinking about what common elements or ideas that you might find in most fairy tales. For example, magic. I want you to be thinking about these fairy tale elements because I'm guessing that we will find most of them in Rusalka. So again, go to minty.com, it's M-E-N-T-I.com, and enter the code 1385-28, and let's start looking at some of our results. So Mr. Dan, I am going to share my screen, and we will see some of those things. So give me just a second. I'm so glad Mentimeter has been shared with us. So here, oh, once upon a time, most definitely. Oh, a happy ending and a lesson. Hmm, Rasulka, definitely some lessons. I think you're gonna be surprised about the ending. Oh, an evil witch. Oh, there's definitely an evil witch. Love kings and queens, so royalty, kindness, yes. A prince? Oh, and another happy ending. <laughs> oh, no. the fairies, fantasy animals. Oh my goodness, yes. Crazy house. The good guy always wins. Oh, interesting. Oh, I like this one. Kim Counselor Elizabeth. It says tragic parts. I think you are going huh. to be amazed with the beauty, but also the tragedy of Rasalka. Oh, magic numbers. Oh, I'm going to have to pay attention. Oh, oh yeah. Three. I might be learning something new about this yeah. opera. And I've known this opera for I, a while. I'm going to be on the lookout for those. Oh, not real fantasy. Oh, suspense. You guys are coming up with some amazing ideas. And these ideas are exactly what inspires music too, which is why telling story and fairy tales um, inspires so many operas and musicals. So this is really exciting. Oh, flying. That's a good one. Most things aren't real impossible things. You guys, we are going to find all of these campers in Rusalka. Well, I am going to leave this minty open. So as you're thinking of things, you can keep adding to it. And if we have time at the end or on Wednesday during our check-in, we will come back and take another look. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're going to go back to... So oh, more about the opera. Yeah, so we are getting ready for Rusalka, um, an amazing fairy tale turned into an opera. So the opera is actually composed by Dvorak. His picture is up there at the top, and then the Czech libretto was written by a poet. And I am sure that I'm going to say his name wrong, Yaroslav. Kavil. And if you know how to say his name correctly and you want to shoot that to me, you are welcome to. Um, so the um, libretto was actually a combined between the story of Little Mermaid and another story. And those are both in the Google Classroom if you want to check them out. We're ready for the next slide. Yeah, we're going to go over these stories just a little bit. I know most of you are familiar with Disney's Little Mermaid, but that is not the only story that Rusalka is based on. So Elizabeth is going to start with the first story that Rusalka is based on, and that is the next slide. Yeah, so The Little Mermaid, I was really surprised because when I was a kid, I don't know that I knew the original story. I knew The Little Mermaid. I had read different versions, and that happens with fairy tales, right? Like, we get different versions. But the original version was written by Hans Christian Andersen. The Little Mermaid falls in love with the prince. That's the common thing, right? She visits a sea witch, another common thing, trades her voice for legs. After some drama, the prince returns. Her, but instead of killing him so that she can have her mermaid life back, she throws the dagger and herself into the sea where she becomes an immortal soul. So 
Not so, not so much necessarily a happy ending. <laughs> no, not a happily ever next- after. <laughs> I was so like sad when I realized this. I think I realized this probably when I was around 11 or 12 that it wasn't the story I thought it was. Okay. And next I don't one. Think I realized that until I learned about <laughs> So, our next slide. It's just a quick, quick, quick version. Um, Disney's The Little Mermaid. A lot of us have seen it. Of course, Ariel is a mermaid that lives in the sea, under the sea, right? Um, With all of her friends and she sees a prince and she falls in love with him, but he is human and lives on land. Um, And sugar cookies, you're right. Hans Christian Andersen is so, so much more sad than The Little Mermaid. (laughs) <laughs> this made it a little bit happier. But of course, you know, she visits Ursula and uh, gets turned into human to meet her prince. And in this story, they do all live happily ever after. But that is not always. And I'm looking the at the Google feed and one of you say it's a little cheesy. And, and maybe it is, but I will I say that the Little Mermaid music is fabulous. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, growing up. It, it's pretty catchy. Okay. Yeah, bring some for you right now, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna grace everybody with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we get to our Rusalka. Rusalka in is actually the name of a water sprite. It's that's what it means. Water sprite, water nymph. She again falls in love with Prince. She trades her voice for legs. Do you see the pattern? After some drama, more drama, and this time lots of singing, the prince rejects her. But instead of killing him so she can have her water nymph life back, she throws the dagger into the lake where she returns to her own world, appearing as a spirit in the moonlight. The moonlight is very, very important. Above the lake, The prince misses Rusulka and searches for her, finding her spirit and rushing into her arms. Here's the drama. Rusulka kisses him and he dies as he begs heaven to be merciful to him. So that's our story. That's our opera for this week. (laughs) Yeah, a little little bit darker than, than maybe what we're used to. But that's, you know, when I'm teaching opera to my students, that's what I always say. It's, It's everything. It's drama. It's love. It's, you know, history. It's all kinds of things. And opera is for everybody. So you don't have to be an expert in in opera to be able to enjoy it. Yes. So next, we're going to talk about- I love the similarities (laughs) between all these tales and how they weave together. Yes, for sure. And I'm guessing as you're watching the opera as well later this week that you're going to notice things that we haven't noticed. Um, So now we're going to introduce you to a couple more of the characters. Of course, we have Rasulka. She's the water nymph. She's a a supernatural creature and her voice part is soprano and she is played by the beautiful Christina Opelace. Next. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> okay, so um, Mr. Dan told us how to say her name correctly in Czech yesterday, and I've forgotten it. Do you remember Camp Counselor Kara? Um, yes, she Baba. Yes, she Baba. The old witch. So in The Little Mermaid, it was Ursula in the movie, the Disney movie, in the actual story. I think it was just the witch, the sea witch. So she has a name in the opera. So that's nice. Played by Jamie Barton, a mezzo oh. soprano. And we know mezzo means medium. So the her voice is not going to be quite as high as Rusulka's. And Jamie Barton, she is just marvelous in any opera she is in. She plays th- this character especially so perfectly. You guys are going to be so impressed with her. It's almost like a laboratory where she's creating her potions. It's pretty herself. amazing. And look it's at her dress. Cool. Look at yes. the details of that. And, of course, her helper. There's our fantasy yeah. creatures. Um, so, yeah, pretty fabulous. Definitely. Yeah. Next. I believe, oh, the water sprite. You guys are gonna have a chance to talk to Mr. Eric Owens later this week. He plays Rusalka's father. Um, He, of course, again, is supernatural. And Eric Owens is a bass baritone. And in this opera, you will get to hear the power of his deep voice. He's so amazing. And again, he is trying to guide Rusalka it's, you know, she's his daughter. He's trying to help her on her journey. And next, oh, yes. 
Of course, like and your mentee had said, we have to have a prince. So we have the prince, the young royal Rusulka falls in love with. So we have Brandon Jovanovic, uh, who is a tenor. Yes, the prince. Oh, and the foreign princess. And I wish she had a name. I know um, when I was watching this opera and learning all about this opera with my fifth graders a couple of years ago, they wanted to give her a name, but she does not have a name. Um, but maybe you guys could give her a name. Maybe give her a name. name. Yeah, we should give her a name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a character that comes in and, and kind of causes a little bit of drama. So you'll have to watch out watch out for that. And her voice part is a soprano. So another beautiful voice you will hear. Again, you will see such beautiful costuming throughout the opera. And this picture is a great example. We have a couple more characters. Ooh, one of our um, campers is talking about composing their own opera <gasps> in Italian for the lying imposter. Ooh, oh, there it is. There it is right there. That sounds incredible. Oh, I do hope you will share some of that with us. <laughs> and if you share it with us in Italian, please translate it because I don't speak Italian and I don't think Miss Johnson does either. No. <laughs> no. But that's one thing that Mrs. Tummins and I have been doing, Miss Elizabeth and I have been doing with our students the last several years is writing and composing operas. So it's so much fun because it allows you to be so creative and come up with such new Yeah. Ideas. And one of the first things that our students do when they compose their operas is that they're required to compose a beginning chorus and an ending chorus. And they're not long, but um, that brings us to the wood nymphs yeah. because they're a group of people, uh, well, nymphs, supernatural creatures um, who are not like Rusulka. They actually have legs and they can run and dance. And you'll see that um, one of your assignments is a movement mm -hmm. um, assignment for later on in the week. And that, that, again, their costumes, their hair, everything is just so beautiful. A couple more characters that you are going to see is the gamekeeper, who is a wise old peasant. A kitchen boy comes into the story as well. There are lots of other characters in the story of Rusalka, but these are the main ones that we wanted to tell you about. Yeah. So, um, sugar cookies, you're right. Some of this really is reminiscent of Greek mythology and how those stories from different times in Greek mythology, like it just kind of soaks into all of these other stories in all of our cultures. It is really cool. And Katie Chen, the costumes are amazing. Yes. Oh, the wood nymphs. Do they dance ballet? My goodness. I am trying to think of it as an actual ballet. This is Tummins. You, you know, I have seen the opera twice. I've seen this version twice and I don't remember if it's ballet or more interpretive. So we'll have to explore that together. Okay. Most definitely. I think that is great. Well, we have another minty for you guys. Now that we're thinking a little bit about the story and about the opera and that slide is going to be coming up next. And what we want you guys to think about, I'm going to share my screen again and go to our Minty. And what you guys are going to be thinking about on this next slide, if I can get my, oh, my next one to come up. Here it is, is this question. So the same code for Minty is 138528. And you can enter that code when you go to menti.com. We all know that in the Little Mermaid story and in Rusalka, this big question comes up. If you had to give up something in order to get something else, what would it be? And somebody said nothing, but it could be something as simple as I would give up pizza today if I could have ice cream for every meal. Something oh. like that. It doesn't have to be anything big, but it can be something small. Rosalka had, had to make the choice to give up her voice in order to become human and have legs. Oh, I would give up my brother. To get ah. 
<laughs> well, and I think about your parents, kiddos. Like I, I know what my parents gave up now. Now that I'm an adult, I really realize what my parents gave up for me to be able to learn my instrument and take extra lessons and be involved in summer camps. And I know the things that I give up just to be able to watch my daughter take dance lessons. And it's not a terrible thing that I give them up because I love seeing it. So what do you love so much that you would give something else up for? Oh, I like this one. I would give up my violin because I hate it to get a Minecraft account. Oh man, my ah. cello. And he might say he would give up playing the cello for <laughs> Minecraft as well. I would give up pizza to be a tenor. Oh my goodness. Oh, this one's interesting, Miss Summons. I would give up pinky toes for wings. I love that. I love that one too. <laughs> I mean, who needs their pinky toes? I think they only help you balance a little bit, I right? That. Yeah. <laughs> I love ice cream for yeah, I'm thinking about COVID and the quarantine, which, you know, it does oh. have, you know, maybe some silver linings. We get to be here and do Afro Camp with you guys, but I would give up ice cream for COVID to end. I would give up my brother <laughs> so quarantine would end. You guys are coming up with some great ideas. So, oh, um, I would give up doing my iPad for bike riding. Oh, oh my goodness. I love that one. Oh, we should all make, everybody should oh. make a effort to go outside today. I agree. Here in Missouri, it's going to rain the next couple of days and it's really mm -hmm. pretty warm outside, but you know, I think we would get outside. Oh, this one I love too. I would give up love to receive love. Oh, campers, you guys are incredible. So again, I'm going to leave this minty open. So you, if you think of things or want to add things throughout the week, you can do that. So I'm going to take off screen share now. And what um, Camp Counselor Elizabeth and I are going to do. What? Oh, the clock? Oh, it's joke the clock. It's oh, joke the clock. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. I can't wait. Sophie from Boston, Massachusetts says, ask, how did Rusulka's dad ask her if she saw him? I don't know. How? He said, Rusulka, do you See me okay? Yes, that's a great one. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> oh, the second one. Olivia from Delaware. Are you ready, Miss Johnson? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Why couldn't the string quartet find their composer? I don't know. Why? Well, because he was hiding. Oh, I, <laughs> I love this, guys. You're hilarious. Oh, I love a good composer joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So <laughs> I think that we're going to go through our Google Classroom yeah. camp store really quick because we don't have very much more time. But that way, you know what we're going to find. So there's going to be some arts and crafts, some yoga and mindfulness. Remember, I'm going to upload a new mindfulness thing every day that you can check into. Do it if you love it. If you need a little time to relax and focus, it's going to they're going to be there all week and you can access them. Some songs, some stories, and of course, adventure challenge activities. Okay, so all the activities that are coming up next are all located in our Google Classroom. They're all totally optional. Um, I think Elizabeth and I have made the directions um, somewhat open-ended, so you can make each activity kind of personalized to you. If you wanna do all of them, do all of them. If you don't want to do any of them, that's fine too. If you want to do one, that is fantastic. But keep in mind that if you submit pictures or videos that your act activities will be shared or can be shared at our camper showcase on Friday. Yeah, my but daughter already did a couple of the assignments, so she's ready. She has them recorded. <laughs> Fantastic. So okay. our first activity is the next slide that Camp Counselor Elizabeth is going to yep. tell you all about. So I have this all recorded. There's a, a video of my daughter and I talking about our home here and about the setting of Rusalka. And then there's also um, me reading the picture book home. Your assignment will be to take a picture or draw in the style of Carson Ellis um, your own home and shoot that to us. Tell us about your setting. Tell us where you live. Um, and that's that. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. 
So again, I have a lot of short little activities that you guys can do. The first one is a six word story. And I know one of our campers has already submitted one. And it sounds kind of difficult to tell a full story in six words, but it can be done. So what you can do- You have do, to choose your words wisely. Oh, you have to choose your words wisely. Um, so you have a couple of options. You can write one six word story for the entire opera of Rusalka, which one of our campers has already done, or, if you want to do one six word story for each act, you could do that as well. I just thought of another idea just while we're talking. If you wanted to create a six word story um, describing one of the characters, that would be another option. So again, mm -hmm. each of these activities is what you want to make it. Okay, coming up next, the next slide something called an infographic. And again, this is something that you can make digitally. It is something that you can use your arts knowledge to create with paper and pencil. But basically, an infographic combines information and graphics, so words and pictures, to tell about the opera. Again, you can tell about the whole opera. You could choose a character to describe. You could choose part of the setting to describe, it's all really up to you. And again, we have another camper that has already submitted an infographic. So I'm so excited to see what you guys have come up with. Um, in the instructions in Google Classroom, I gave some examples of different ways that you could create your infographic, but again, it's totally up to you. Next, I know some campers have um, done this for other weeks as well, but creating a graphic novel is something um, that camp counselor Elizabeth and I like to do with our students because they love graphic novels. So I have just very basic directions on how to start your graphic novel and what to do. There's some example pictures of what my students, my fifth graders came up with a couple years ago with actually the opera Rusalka. And then there are some blank pages that you can print out and use if you would like, or if you want to create your own um, graphics, you can do that as well. So those are our graphic novel ideas. I can't wait to see these. Poetry and movement. Oh, Mrs. Tummins, I'm so yes. excited. For this and um, there's a question about when is this done? Like, you don't oh, have yeah. to do all of these activities. You can pick and choose. It's supposed to be fun. It's camp. So you pick the ones that call to you. The Google Classroom will be open throughout the mm -hmm. summer. Um, camp counselor Dan told us that later, or last night. So if you want to come back to this next week and keep working on some of them, Miss Miss Kara and I will both be checking back in. So I'm my next activity is um, poetry inspiring, I'm sorry, art inspiring, poetry inspiring movement. And you'll find that in the Google Classroom. There is a video of me again going through um, some different art that is inspired by the moon and water and the Little Mermaid. Um, one of the things I really missed with the quarantine and the pandemic was that one of my last trips with my honors choir was supposed to be to take them to the Kansas City Art Museum. So I've really been missing seeing art up close and personal. So I decided to share some art. Ben, you're going to choose your piece of art. You can choose one of the pieces that I gave you or a different one. If you choose a different one, though, share it with me because I want to see it. Okay? Can I really so, yes. Simmons, uh -huh. um, the art challenge with Miss B this week is a water art challenge. So well. you could use that oh, too. Could. That. And we'll talk and we can talk more about that on Wednesday. So that. I have a template for you to write a really short poem. It's kind of like a haiku. Um, and then you'll use those words to choreograph your own movement. And I told you already that my daughter Sadie loves to dance. So Sadie took my poem and she worked with the words to choreograph that. Then she used the music from Rusalka. She chose um the song to the moon the beautiful aria um but also you could choose the overture or anything else and she put her choreography from the poem to the music and she did it twice because one of my rules in my classroom is that once you compose or choreograph something it only counts if you can actually do it two times in a row so that's that assignment we're ready for the next one okay 
So next up, uh, it's a fun activity thinking about those characters in Rusalka um, and how they change or if they change throughout the opera, whether it's a physical change, you know, obviously Rusalka has a physical change that happens to her, or if just something happens to their character in their mind. So you can pick any character you want in Rusalka and you can do this before you watch the opera or you can do it after you watch the opera. Um, and again, there's a template for you to print out and use if you would like, or you can just do this um, with your own paper and your own art supplies. But to draw a picture of what your character looks like at the beginning of the opera, and then draw a picture of your character at the end of the opera. Are they the same? Are they different? And then there's also a place for you to describe with words. And again, if you don't want to describe the change with words and you just want to draw, that is totally fine. It's summer camp. You can do this activity however you would like. One of my favorites. Okay, next up, you can make a movie poster. I know Rosalka is an opera. But it, needs, it might need some advertising. So what you can do is think about if you were going to advertise for Selka as a movie, what you would do. So again, all of these instructions are in our Google Classroom. You can use any kind of paper you want, any kind of art supplies you want. If you want to make it digitally, that would be fantastic as well. Um, and then I just put some examples of movie posters that my students have created in the past, maybe to spark some inspiration for you. Um, but we have another minty, Rusalka, lots of water. I know Miss B's activity this week involves you thinking about water. So head on over to menti.com. Again, you might still have it open on the device that you're using. Enter the code 138528. And have you had a chance, maybe not during quarantine, maybe not since you've been at home to go swimming, but think about your favorite place to go swimming. It could be now, it could be in the past, or maybe you're just dreaming about some place you want to go. So I'm going to share my screen with you and let's see where people want to take go swimming. I'm going to move on from this Minty. Where is your favorite place to go swimming? So here are your options to think about. A swimming pool, the ocean, <laughs> a river. I don't know, maybe if it's a small river, you might wanna go swimming in a river. If you have a creek close to you, a pond, a lake. And I added other because I'm sure there is some place to go swimming that <laughs> I'm not thinking of. I know my husband rides his bike all over the area where we live and he and his buddies have a, have a little swimming hole off one of their bike rides. And I don't know if I would consider it any of these things. So, oh, let me uh -huh. And so, lots of people in Missouri go um, floating on the rivers. So yes. lots of swimming there in the rivers. Yeah, well, in Lake, we have a big area in Missouri called the Lake of the Ozarks. That is south of where we are here in Columbia. So you might go swimming at a lake. So swimming, swimming pool scene. Ooh, outer banks. Oh, I think I need a vacation. You guys are making me want to take a vacation right now. So swimming pool, I think might be our winner for now. Again, I will leave this minty open if you want to continue to add. <laughs> Alexander Tan, no one went for the pond. I, I, know, pond, I hate the bottom, the feeling of the bottom of a pond. <laughs> There's lots of fish too and Moss. Ooh, a hot tub. <laughs> oh, the other. I knew there were things that I was going to forget. Okay. okay. Awesome. Are we ready to, We're gonna get to back go through the rest to, of our yes, activity? Yeah, we got a couple more. So the next activity I saw, I can't remember if it was last week with Kim Counselor um, Emily or if it was the week before with Camp Counselor Tim but I loved it, so I kind of borrowed it for this week too. You get to be the critic. So this probably makes the most sense to do after you've seen Rosalka. You get to critique the opera. So think about the things that you absolutely loved about the production, but also is there anything that you would 
change. So you can either write this down or you could make us a little video and submit it to our Google Classroom. So next, it's very similar to you being the critic, but remember the person who writes the actual lyrics to the opera is the librettist. Um, so if you want to rewrite a part of Rasulka or change it in any way, you could be the librettist and do that. Again, you can write it or you could write it and then make a video sharing your ideas with us. I would be really curious. I wonder if anybody would want to change the ending. I don't know. Make it more of a oh, joke oh, o'clock. Okay. 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 Are you ready? I'm ready. Camp counselor Kara. Yep. Okay, right. let's see. Jokes, jokes, jokes from Ishan in New Delhi, India. Okay. Where did the fisherman and the mermaid meet? I don't know. Where? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> On line. Oh my goodness, it's so hilarious. Like and of course, we're meeting all of you guys yes. online. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we just finished up Be a Librettist. Yes. And so oh. we're moving to. Yes, we got a couple where we have our time is running. So we'll yes, get... and I forgot to put one of mine up. So I'll talk about it when we okay. get to your moon so, activity. Yeshi Baba's potion. Make a potion again. If I was going to make a potion, it can be pretend, it can be real. Um, if you're gonna make a mess, make sure to ask your parents first. But if I was gonna make a potion to make myself run faster, I would get a big pot. I might throw in a water bottle, cause you know, staying hydrated is super important when you're on a run. I might throw in some sunscreen because if you're running and it's sunny outside, you need some sunscreen. I might throw in a cliff bar or some other nutrition bar to give myself more energy. Ah. I know. Headphones, because you got to have something to listen to. Can you toss in somebody to give you a massage? Oh, like a ride. <laughs> a running <laughs> shoe. And then I might take it and stir it all together and come up with an imaginary potion. That would make me run faster. I love so that. It can be real. It can be imaginary. Again, you can draw us a picture. You can make a video. You can just write about it and submit it to a Google Classroom. So, ah, uh, yes, I'm being laughed at it. I do. I just, <laughs> I'm glad. Have fun with it. Fabulous. Uh, next, really quickly, since the song to the moon is such a beautiful aria in Rosalka, in our Google Classroom, there are just links to some websites if you want to learn more about the moon or do activities with the moon. My favorite is um, cookie moon phases, where you get to eat the cookie <laughs> the different moon phases. So you can and head on over to and the thing that I forgot to add into the slideshow for this morning is that the music part of it, right? So we're going to write some music in one of my activities. Um, Sadie, my daughter, who I've mentioned multiple times, and I made a video um, telling you how to make your own ocean drum. And then we were inspired by Song to the Moon. So there's two videos in there, one to do the ocean drum and one to go into composing your own music or using my music to play your ocean drum. So we have both of those. I used acapella, um, the app acapella. It's um, There's a version that's free that you can use to layer in some of your different pieces and parts. And you can use whatever instruments you have on hand. So check that that's out. Incredible. We worked really hard. I used my recorder and a xylophone I had at home. So it was lots of fun. Um, I want to hear your music. This is an opera. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, next on our slides, it's just some an activity called Camper's Choice. You guys, I'm sure, have the best ideas that we have not even come up with. So if you have an idea that you want to create or make something to submit um, for our Camper Showcase or just to share with us in Google Classroom, you can. It's available. And last but not least, oh, Camp Counselor Elizabeth, I love that you made this. Ah, okay. So we have our Rusulka's library and notice my bookshelves are not full. There is a Google form. I was told it's not working for everyone. So you can even just comment on the comments stream um, and let me know what books would you like added on to that? And I can make more recordings. And so some of them are music books, all of them are picture books, but we could even add in some poetry. Um, so click on those books check them out. Tell me what else we need to add to our bookshelf. If it's not in English, you might have to send me a recording of yourself reading it because um, 
I, I've only studied Spanish. So besides English, uh, so that's, that's what we have there. And speaking of languages, we have people from all around the world. Mm -hmm. So two of my assignments, one of them included poetry and one of them included writing some of your own music and your own story songs. Please use your languages, but give me a translation so I know what your music and your poetry is about. <laughs> yes, exactly. And no, no naughty words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, next, we just are going to wrap things up. We have a couple of reminders, and um, Camp Counselor Elizabeth made this for you. There's also a calendar in our Google Classroom. Anything else, Camp Counselor Elizabeth? I, I don't think so. Um, tomorrow we get a great activity with Miss Camp Counselor Trinka and um, got, can't wait for the artist chat and story time. I mean, I'm just so excited um, and I'm excited to see, I, like I said, I've seen this opera two or three times and I'm excited to see it again this week. Yeah, yes. oh, Tegan is asking. Chinese, Chinese and, and English. English. I love it. Please, please, please. Because um, I'm actually switching schools this year and I have so many students from all around the world um, that go to my school. And so I would love to have things that you share with me that maybe I could share with my students at my new school. Yeah. Uh, it's really exciting for me. And you know your culture and your language way better than what I do. So I, you probably have a lot that you can teach me and I'm so excited for that. Yeah, so just a couple more reminders. You can watch the opera Wednesday through Friday. All of that information and the link to watch it is in our Google Classroom. Remember all the times that are listed are Eastern time or New York time. There is a time zone um, calculator in um, Google Classroom if you don't know what time that is, wherever you are in the world. Um, but other than that, I don't know if we have time for questions. Camp Counselor Dan has been in the background helping us out with everything. Um, but if there's any questions that anybody has in the next minute or so, we can answer. Otherwise, I don't think we will see everybody again till Wednesday, Camp Counselor Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, but we're available, right? So we we're going to We'll keep checking the Google Classroom. So if you pop something in or a comment in, we're checking it. Yes, so we so can totally answer you. Um, we'll try to fix things along the way. And if something is wrong with our technology, then we'll just be flexible and um, we'll try something else. Yeah, we've never done this before. Opera Camp is totally new. So we are learning right along with you. And we are so excited that you guys are have a watch today. And hopefully we will see you and connect with you later this week. Anything else? I Dan? think so. Awesome. Counselor Dan, if there's any other last minute reminders you need to give, um, or if there are any questions that oh we- Oh my need gosh. To Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Great. You sound yeah. good. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. What a wonderful lesson. And there's so much to do. I'm there might be more than what they can do. And that's okay. <laughs> right. get to choose. Here's a good question from Ratna. Here we see. Can we do any activity? Yes, yeah. any activity. That's why I added in that camper's choice activity too. So if nothing that we um, told you about today, like sparked your imagination, choose something on your own completely. Absolutely. Um, Swati has a question here. Where is the joke turn in? Um, we, it's in the, um, it's in the Google classroom, mm -hmm. but I'll also chat it into um, both chat features right now. So just, you can click on this link. Um, I'm going to type it to you all so Perfect. here. Keep bringing your questions. We have a few more minutes with Camp Counselor Kara and Camp Counselor Elizabeth. Oh, my gosh. I know. So good. All right. That's coming your way. Let's see what other questions we have. All right, friends. Um, so earlier there was a question about why the prince died from the kiss from Rusalka. So that oh. so maybe we could go into that because the prince does die in Rusalka, but not in any of the other versions, right? Um, because he was like lovesick for her, and the the foreign princess was like, "I can't believe that you're still hooked on that other um, 
princess who couldn't even talk, right? So right. he went like looking for her and um, Rusulka had given up a lot just for the love of her prince and she went away, but she was kind of became like almost an evil spirit. So he knew and she knew that if they met again, he was going to die. Wow. And that, I mean, that was part of the spell from the old witch. You know what I love <laughs> about this, um, this fairy tale and this opera, especially is that there are so many wonderful versions of this mm -hmm. story. Yes. And Every time I watch it, I'm surprised by little pieces of it that I forgot, but I love this production. It's so fantastical. And if you love fantasy, and if you love, uh, someone said Harry, po Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire has mermaids. If you love Harry Potter, yes. you are gonna love this opera. This has got all kinds of beautiful costumes. And yes, uh, someone had asked earlier if there's dancing with the with the water nymphs, and mm -hmm. there, there is, there's some yes. beautiful ballet in this. You're going to have a great time. And there are um, courtly dancers in, oh, yes. the, in the home of the prince. You'll love oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I have one question here from Stephanie Parker okay. that I want to just, I'm not sure how to answer this. Oh, King Counselor Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. So the, the app that I used was called Acapella. Um, and you, there's a free version. And then, but if you want to get the more, the, the version that costs, you need to talk with your parents. Right. Um, but otherwise, you can also just record it on your phone or your tablet or whatever. And you can just you don't have to have all of the layers. But acapella, my daughter and I really did have a lot of fun recording different instruments and singing all together. So acapella. And, and I put it in the Google Classroom, right? I put the link in the Google Classroom okay. as well. And that's along with the ocean drum tutorial. Yeah. And one question that keeps popping up over and over again is um, all of the students are asking, or several students have asked where they can find the code for the Google Classroom. And now we can't publish that here because it's a secret code. And, um, we just need you to email us and we'll happily remind you. But it was also at the sort of middle bottom of you, the email that you received um, introducing the week. So week three email, you'll see all the Google Classroom codes and you have to use uh, alphabetically by where your last name lines up. Mm -hmm. But but just email us, uh, yep. we'll check the email, we'll get you, we'll get you lined up. And um, gosh, I could just hang out with these wonderful campers all day. Yeah, let's get together. What I really love is how everybody is talking about all of the languages that they speak and how inspired they are. Um, and we are so the excited to see what you come up with. That really goes along with that idea of setting and home and where you're from. The prince and Rusalka were from totally different places. And that really affected how they interacted. Right. Well, here's one more comment. And I think we can all share this one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, thank thank you, so you guys. Much. I can't Perfect. wait to see what you come up with. Thank you to our wonderful, <laughs> wonderful Camp counselors, Kara and Elizabeth, thank you for being here. Um, we will see all of you tomorrow for mm -hmm. a very fun hands-on activity with uh, Camp Counselor Trinket. Um, you are going to love her. She's one of my favorite teachers of all time. We're gonna so have high energy. She's amazing. We're gonna She's have a fabulous. Look at that, Leo. We agree. The Met is so- It is amazing. We love the Mets. We're going to have a great time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Ha, <laughs>